Hello ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a great weekend and that you enjoyed the 24 hours of Le Mans. It certainly was an interesting one, being the 100th anniversary of the first race being held all the way back in 1923. And yeah, I really enjoyed this year's race, one of the greatest races in a long time, at least when it comes to the top class. So here is my summary and thoughts about the 2023 24 hours of Le Mans. So the race started with two Ferraris on the front row and the two Toyotas on the second row. And already on the first lap, we got introduced to the new safety car routine, which I have to say, I really dislike the safety cars. And my goldfish brain can't remember if we have actually had safety cars before. I certainly can't remember safety cars at Le Mans. But then again, my memory is pretty terrible. Anyway, I'd rather see them doing slow zones and full course yellows. And the reason being, safety cars are boring. And it really seemed pointless in a 24 hour race. Because what's the point of building up a gap when you just get reset behind the safety car anyway? It's not like there won't be other things happening to scramble up the positioning. So yeah, I really disliked the new safety car procedure. It was boring, took a long time to reposition and it was just all around terrible in my opinion. But after the safety cars we had some amazing racing and we also got some rain that caused absolute chaos to the race. And it was massively enjoyable and quite scary to watch as it absolutely poured down on parts of the track while some of it remained pretty dry. And cars were of course too slow to change to wet tires so cars were sliding all around going off track into gravel pits and barriers. And yeah, it was both hugely entertaining and nerve wracking. We saw a lot of different cars holding the top positions which was extremely enjoyable. We even saw cars like Joda and Peugeot lead for decent periods of time, which was really exciting. And although Ferrari and Toyota seemed to be the quickest cars through the free practices and qualifiers, it was really good to see that there were some competition for the top spots. We also saw a lot of retirements through the race, with 20-ish cars that had to be retired. That's a massive percentage of cars, and that's not what we want to see, obviously. But yeah, there always is retirements, but this year's race had more than the usual amount, and I don't know quite why. Anyway, let's go through the classes and starting as usual with the hypercars. First off, let's talk Ferrari, who last raced at Le Mans in 1973, 50 years ago. And they did well in hyperpole, taking pole position, and would go on to have a rather drama-free race. Except some problems starting the car from the pits. They had an extremely clean and good run and would eventually go on to win with their 51 car. The 50 car would have a harder race and would place 5th. Toyota is the car I expected to win and they were in contention for the entire race basically. The number 7 car was involved in an incident while I was sleeping and was retired. So all their hopes were on the number 8 car which had some problems with balance and seemed to be uncomfortable to drive. It kept close to the leading Ferrari for the longest time until it had a spin which would lose a lot of time and ended over a minute behind the winning Ferrari in second place. Cadillac took third and fourth with another solid performance from the caddies and the Cadillacs just seemed to be in the background never providing much to talk about and just doing their own thing. There was a moment in the rain that one of the Cadillacs were extremely close to hitting the barriers as it was spinning uncontrollably, which was lucky, but yeah, another good results for the Cadillacs. Glickenhaus took 6th and 7th. The cars were not the quickest and had quite a few incidents, which all seemed to be driver errors. But it's a very good results for the Glickenhaus, I think, and they managed to finish with both cars, which is a win in of itself. And I'm pleased to see them this high up on the list. I was really impressed by the Peugeots as they seem to be very reliable compared to the rest of the season. They also seem to have some pace as well and did lead the race for a little while. Though eventually the reliability would catch up with the Peugeot cars and they ended in 8th and 12th. But this gives me a bit higher expectations for the competitiveness of the Peugeots in the coming races. Porsche is probably not too happy with their race, with the highest car finishing in 9th. It was higher up but had issues close to the end of the race, which is a shame for Porsche. Their other car placed 11th and had some issues through the race 
and the last factory Porsche would sadly end up retiring. Action Express Racing, the third Cadillac, had issues in the beginning and were a long way back from the rest of the hypercars, but would keep it clean after and would eventually place 10th, a good result after spending a lot of time in the pits. In 13th we find Hertz Team Joda, the Golden Porsche, which we saw lead the race for a bit and it was heartbreaking as they had a massive incident that would ruin their entire bodywork and probably other things too. They spent a lot of time in the pits which would put them far behind the rest of the hypercars sadly, but it was amazing to see them being competitive and leading the race. Last is Van Wall Racing, which I don't have much to say about. I mentioned that I hoped to see them finish the race, but they did actually end up retiring the car, which was extremely sad to see. But yeah, Le Mans is harsh and many cars ended in this manner. So yeah, the number 51 Ferrari won the race, ahead of the number 8 Toyota, and the number 2 Cadillac took third, so congratulations. But let's talk LMP2 quickly, and in my pre-race video I said I would be following the Jota and the number 63 Prema car, I believe. The Jota was in contention for the class win and would lead for a while, but just like the hypercar it had an incident and had to spend time in the pits as well, and eventually placed 13th. Not a great position, as it's a car that should have been fighting at the top, so that's a bit of a shame. The number 63 Prema had problems and would be retired after 9 or so hours, so that was a shame too. The LMP2 class win would be taken by Inter Europol Competition's 34 car, with Team WRT's number 41 car taking second, and the Duquesne team placing third. Massive congratulations! Last, the GTE class, where my eyes were set on the Richard Mille AF course and the Corvette. And once again, the Richard Mille AF course would be retired after only 4 hours, so that wasn't great. The Corvette, however, would do extremely well and did end up winning the race, ahead of ORT in 2nd and GR Racing in 3rd, so congratulations to those. I want to mention the Iron Dames who came 4th as well as they were in contention for not just the podium but the win at the late stages of the race. And last, the car that won everyone hearts I think, the Project 1 AO car, or Rexy, who placed 7th, one of the greatest liveries I've ever seen. And let's also mention the Garage 56 car too, as that was also one of the fan favorites it seemed. A NASCAR among the sports cars were cool and they did a good job finishing the race in 39th overall and yeah it was really cool seeing it on track and I do think a lot of people took a liking to the car. Hopefully we see more cool stuff from the Garage 56 in the future. But yeah that was the 24 hours of Le Mans, an extremely entertaining race with a bit of a shit start with the safety cars and all. I really do think they should reconsider the safety cars as it truly was awful in my opinion. Another thing I was extremely disappointed by was the FIA WEC streaming service that was absolute garbage. Extremely unstable and not usable with Chromecast. I personally liked last year's service better even though it lacked features. At least it worked. So yeah, they need to fix their stream for sure. But that's it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the 2023-24 hours of Le Mans in the comments. If you liked this video, please click the like button. If you didn't, then feel free to dislike it. And if you want to see more of my content, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.